Hey everyone, it's Michael with Christopher Street Tours, and on today's episode of Queer History, we're going to be talking about Christopher Street Liberation Day, often known as the very first Pride March. This story begins at the Stonewall Uprising, a series of violent demonstrations and protests from the LGBTQ community against the police at the Stonewall Inn in New York City in 1969. This event is often known as the spark of the modern gay rights movement because it shaped the course of history and advocacy as we know it to be today. After the Stonewall Uprising had occurred, LGBTQ folks were inspired and empowered to create faster and more radical social change. There was one group of people in particular who gathered at an LGBTQ organization's conference in Philadelphia in 1969. Their names were Craig Rodwell, Fred Sargent, Linda Rhodes, and Ellen Broidy. The two men were part of an organization called HIM, or the Homophile Youth Movement in Neighborhoods, and the two women were part of an organization called the Lavender Menace. The conference that they attended was the 1969 Eastern Regional Conference for Homophile Organizations, or in other words, a group of LGBTQ organizations in the Eastern region, including the New York chapters of the Mattachine Society and the Daughters of Belitis, among others. While at the conference, these four LGBTQ folks proposed that an annual march take place in New York City to commemorate the Stonewall Uprising. The proposal read, we propose that a demonstration be held annually on the last Saturday in June in New York City to commemorate the 1969 spontaneous demonstrations on Christopher Street, and this demonstration be called Christopher Street Liberation Day. No dress or age regulations shall be made for this demonstration. We also propose that we contact homophile organizations throughout the country and suggest that they hold parallel demonstrations on that day. We propose a nationwide show of support. Most members of the conference supported the proposal, and the first Christopher Street Liberation Day march was created. The first march took place in New York City on June 28, 1970, one year after the Stonewall Uprising. The march started in the Greenwich Village, with protesters marching 51 blocks all the way up to Central Park. After the marchers arrived, they held a gay rights demonstration, which they called a gay inn. In speaking about this event, historian Lillian Faderman commented, Never in history had so many gay and lesbian people come together in one place for a common endeavor. The march that year took about half the scheduled time, with some people calling it a run instead of a march. This was mostly due to excitement, but there was also some wariness about marching openly through the streets with protest signs and banners. Surprisingly, the marchers received little resistance from onlookers. The march started with about 200 people, but over the course of the march, that number grew to 2,000 people, taking up 15 city blocks, or about three quarters of a mile. It is important to remember, though, that during this time in 1970, LGBTQ folks were still seen as criminals, mentally ill, and as sinners. Times were changing after the Stonewall Uprising, and there was a new sense of gay liberation, but it was still extremely brave and courageous for LGBTQ folks to be marching openly through the streets. The march continued to grow exponentially every year, expanding to more cities and more countries around the world. Eventually, the term pride became popular, and the language of a march or a demonstration eventually changed to what we now know as the Pride Parade. This language has a more celebratory feel, as opposed to the political and demonstrative language that was used in the past. The popularization of the word pride is often attributed to Brenda Howard, a bisexual activist who is known as the mother of pride. Brenda Howard also popularized the idea of extending the march into a week-long celebration of Pride activities. The idea of calling the march gay power was also considered, but at that time, relatively speaking, gay people had very little power. However, something everybody could have was Pride, and at that time, being open and being proud in who you were was considered to be a radical political statement. Today, Pride events occur all over the country and all over the world. 
The record for the largest Pride Parade is currently held by New York City in 2019, when they celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising and celebrated World Pride, with an estimated 4 to 6 million people in attendance. And that concludes this episode of Queer History with Christopher Street Tours. Be sure to subscribe to our channel below or follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Christopher Street Tours for more queer history. Until next time. Christopher Street Tours is an LGBTQ-owned organization. Our mission is to make LGBTQ history accessible and engaging, sharing stories and uplifting voices from those who paved the way before us. For more information and resources, please visit ChristopherStreetTours.com.